class, welcome. My name is Professor Lando. In today's lecture, we will be going over waifus and husbandos. What is a waifu? What is a husbando? From Urban Dictionary, a waifu is used to refer to a fictional girl or woman. Usually, they say usually, I want to say pre predominantly, uh, a girl or woman fictional in anime, manga, or video games that you are attracted to and that you would even marry. And a husbando is uh, the same thing, but you know, the male version. What's the appeal of a waifu? 2D versus 3D. Where do we start off a rejection of the 3D? 3D being real women and men. Now it's, it's actually interesting because nowadays, three, this is not actually, qu uh, not exactly correct anymore. Technology has advanced to where we have 3D fictional waifus. What a time to be alive. You ever see Ready Player One, the, the Oasis? 3D fictional waifus are becoming a thing. But again, you know, I, we talk about the mainstream understanding, the, the uh, colloquial, um, the word on the streets, we refer to 3D as like the real reality. We talk about waifus and husbandos serving as sort of a surrogate for uh, perhaps, you know, in the very extreme end, like a, a, a lack of actual, or perhaps a longing for an actual relationship. And on the other end, just, you know, casually, like, this is a character I like. And it's sort of like a, an inside joke, or rather a, a, a sort of tongue-in-cheek way to just say very plainly, like, I just really like this character. We talk about anime tropes. Tropes in anime, waifus, husbandos. Not necessarily a trope, but very tied into things like sundares, snaggle teeth, when the screen freezes at the end of the episode and becomes all washed out, like they do that at the end of Kill a Kill in a lot of old school animes. The good, the protagonist has like an evil side. Uh-oh, Nine Tails Naruto, um, Hollow Ichigo. Uh, the reason I bring up tropes is that waifus and husbandos, there's a very clear distinction that that is, that is not a harem. We don't lump them in with harems. What is a harem in the anime sense? There's a genre of light novels, manga, anime, originating in Japan in the 1970s, but exploding the late uh, 1980s and 90s with dating simulator games. Focusing on, what, what do you call it? Polyandrous, polyamorous relationships, relationships involving multiple people, mainly the protagonist and multiple waifus or husbandos. Right, where the protagonist is surrounded by three or more um, love interests. I think people get it twisted. There, there's a certain viewpoint you have to maintain. Pure versus impure. A lot of people claim to have waifus. A lot of people claim to have a husbando. And they have very high standards for their waifu or husbando. Um, and I, I feel like there's a bit of a double standard happening here because how can you expect your waifu or husbando to be loyal if you yourself are not? You are partaking in fantasies of a harem. You're watching uh, you know, you're watching Naruto and going, oh, oh shit, Hinata's looking like a little snack. And then, and then what, you turn on, um, you know, you, you watch some Bleach and you're like, oh, Yoroichi's looking pretty good. Human form ain't bad either. Impure. How can you hold your waifu to, the, to a standard that you cannot meet yourself? You cannot have more than one waifu. Be true to the waifu. Be true to your husband though. Let's talk more about like what is the waifu for people who are not quite understanding. Perhaps a surrogate for some sort of relationship or rather lack of a relationship that you have. Using a waifu or husband though as a pseudo surrogate. You know, I think there's some people who truly think and they criticize like waifus and husbandos. Like this is some sick stuff. These people are unhealthy. This is bad for society. It, it needs to be said that a lot of this is tongue in cheek. But that being said, it's sort of like how you remember when people said YOLO and people made fun of other people who said YOLO and they started to say YOLO ironically. And then you kind of like, you keep saying it and then you kind of can't stop saying it. And then it becomes like not, no longer like an ironic thing anymore. A modern version would be sheesh, sheesh. You know, it's kind of like, oh, ha ha. It's like ironic. You say it ironically, you're like, sheesh, sheesh. And then like uh, a few sheeshes later, you're kind of just talking to someone, you go, sheesh. And you're like, oh, you're kind of doing it on purpose. Or not on purpose, but you're kind of doing it like not ironically anymore. I think the same thing applies with the uh, concept of waifu and husbando. Uh, I was asked, who's my waifu? 
And I was going to say Ostolfo. Uh, I've not found a jar, uh, an, an adequate sized jar for this one quite yet. But let's say you have waifus on this side and husbandos on this side. I think what we could say, what do you find here? Ostolfo's Ostolfussy. And I, you know, I am partly serious. Like I really like Ostolfo. That if you ask me who's your waifu, I would say Ostolfo. But it's like, not really, like I don't have an actual mentally, like I don't sit there and talk and I, tr I don't truly think I have some sort of like connection. That being said, there are some people that maybe take it too far. You know, I think I have a scientifically proven method to help cure you. The somatosensory system is a part of the sensory nervous system that is associated with the sense of touch, temperature, pain, your ability to sense physical sensation. So that's the first concept. Second concept, Posier. is a large and nearly ubiquitous family of mono, monocotyledonous flowering plants known as grasses. So what you can do is you can apply both of these concepts to help cure yourself and you can touch the grass. Where would you say this is located? This species is often found outside of your home primarily. So this does require you to leave your dwelling and go outside to touch the grass. You know, you could just simply say, oh, this is my waifu or this is my husbando because, you know, I just mentally, that I just know it to be true. It's in my mind, like that is my husbando. Um, but in practice, there can be a little, a little more uh, tangible, more practical way of um, showing your affection for your waifu or husbando uh, through the use of two artifacts. First artifact being a Daki Makura, otherwise known as a body pillow, specifically originating in Japan. Uh, during the late 90s and early 2000s, Daki Makura began to intertwine with otaku culture, anime, uh, leading to the production of pillow covers. So you have usually these, these they're called body pillows because they are the length of a body. You could say this is the, is the body pillow. This is like your bed. But they're, the body pillow has a sleeve, you know, like a normal pillow, ha has a pillowcase. You, you, you put the large pillowcase over the body pillow and on this is printed on it is your waifu or husbando. And it's usually double-sided because there's two sides to a pillow. Usually, again, there's some that are fully nude on both sides. Some are fully clothed on both sides. One side could be clothed, safe for work, and the other side could be more lewd. The, the concept, the appeal of a body pillow, it's been a hard day, hard day's work. Come home, take off the tie, tired. No one there to give you warmth, to tell you, you know, good job today, welcome home. You come home to a dark, cold, empty apartment. You're too tired to cook yourself up something and you're too tired to stop by somewhere on the way. So you just heat up your Stouffer's microwave meal. It's time for bed. You didn't have any time for yourself. You just worked a full day and you're about to go to bed just to wake up to do the same thing over again. Turn off the lights, you, you lay it down, but you can turn over in your bed and what's next to you? looking back at you, your, your body pillow, your dakimakura, the loving eyes of your waifu or husbando looks back at you. And that, that, that's the appeal of the uh, dakimakura. I have an example. So what are we talking about exactly? You know, some people are visual learners. So this, this is a body pillow. This is, you know, on, on one side is a printed image of a husbando. In this case, this is Okurikara from, from, uh, Token Rambu, Sword Boys, as it's colloquially called. You see, it's, a, it's called a body pillow because it's body length and body, a body is printed on it. One side, kind of lewd, kind of showing off the little tummy, the kind of like the V bones, you would call it. Um, but you know, like I said, you come home after a hard night, you can, you know, you kind of, you go, ah, you know, work sucked, life sucks, no family or friends, but I can come back to you. Okurikara. So that's one way to show your affection for your wife or husbando. An ita bag, um, literally meaning painful bag, is, is a handbag or backpack or other kind of bag covered in badges, buttons, figurines, and other merchandise pertaining to anime and manga fandom. In Japan, ita bags are a popular piece of apparel among female anime and manga fans. What we have here, this is an example of an ita bag. 
you can see what I meant. This is a bag covered in badges, buttons, figurines, or other merchandise pertaining to um, the definition says anime or manga fandom. Specifically, we're talking about waifus and husbando. So in this case, this is Cecile from Utapri, and you can see what we talk about. How do you show your affection for your husbando? It, this is all this one character. And not only is it just this one character, um, this particular, you know, when this was excavated, they'd have to do a little more forensics to see, but whatever twisted, sick, unwell individual used to own this bag went the extra length to only include official merch. Even the bag itself is an official piece of merchandise specific for this character. Let's say you're out and about. I'm crossing the street like this, crossing the street, and someone goes, oh, is that an Ita bag? And I'm like, why, yes it is. I'm glad you noticed my official Cecile from Utapri uh, Ita bag. And they're like, ah, must be your husband though, correct? Indubitably, sir. You go to a convention, you meet with other people, they, they will have their own Ita bags, and they show it off to each other with their own personal husbando. You know, it's like that scene in American Psycho where they show each other the business cards. Let's see Paul Allen's Ita bag. I'm like, oh my god, the inner monologue. Look at the color, it matches the brand of the character. Look <laughs> at that Astolfo Ita bag. My god. Is that a signature board from the actual voice actor? Right? It's like that. Allegory of a cave. Um, in this allegory, a group of people uh, are described um, as living chained to the wall of a cave. All their lives, they're chained to the wall of this cave, facing the wall, a blank wall. They watch shadows. You know, imagine they're, they're facing the wall like this. They have no other choice, and they've been like this for their entire lives. And on the wall, shadows are projected onto the wall, you know, using light, whether it's fire or something. Images are projected onto the wall, like this. It would be like this. They're watching the shadows, right? The shadows to these people are their reality. That is reality to them because that's all they know. But you know, as we know, those shadows are, are not accurate representations of the world, but these people chain to the wall. That's all they know. This is the allegory of the cave. People who go out into the real world and see what it, it is truly, they come back and the people that are chained up uh, facing the wall, they reject those people because they, you know, they say you're insane. You are going to, you're speaking nonsense. You're, you're going to ruin, I, I can't cope. You're going to ruin my reality and they reject the true reality. Thanos once said, reality is often disappointing. Thanos also said, Reality can be whatever I want. Very applicable to the concept of waifus and husbandos. In fact, that's what Thanos should have done. With a snap of my fingers, half the population turns into a Stolfo. This is the allegory of a weeb. Waifus and husbandos. You, all your life, that's all you know. And it's, it's better to accept the, the, the fiction that you've been presented with. It's easier to cope than having to just over here, yonder, is, is reality. Here. But, like Thanos said, reality is often disappointing. But now, now, reality can be whatever I want. This is us, this is you. And this is just whatever waifu. You could say it's allegory of the weeb. Mm -hmm.